No king rules forever, my son. I see. Only darkness. Welcome back, friends and foes. I just reached the first milestone of my hacking and machinima passion project, and as promised, here is a showcase video which will also serve as a short tutorial. Since I don't want to bore you to death, I try to keep the introduction as short as possible. So, why does this tool even exist in the first place? As you might have already known, I'm a very big fan of exploration, as well as learning about the inner workings of games. My previous videos showing off Sulgurup inside Karazhan or the hidden Tauron village southeast of Teneris were my first projects on that topic. But to be honest, I wasn't completely happy with the result because of the chunky camera movement or the unnecessary sounds like footsteps for example. To get rid of those issues, I was searching for solutions in form of a program and after a little bit of digging I found out that there actually are machinima tools for version 3.3.5 namely WoW Machinima Tool and Bugcraft Studio. Unfortunately, it turned out that both run a stable, intuitive and correct as Blizzard's very own code for WoW Classic Race and Dungeons. I'm looking at you, Upper Blackrock Spire. If you like broken features or apps just straight up crashing in your face, you will certainly feel right at home here. Since I got multiple strokes every second I had to deal with those apps, I decided to write something of my own. In addition to creating smooth camera movement, I also found two hacking programs which provided a set of additional features I found useful for exploration. These were Gagarin, which probably gave my PC Super 8s when I ran it, as well as Hitchhiker's Hack. My very first attempt was writing new WoW utils in Rust, but being put off by the lack of mature UI toolkits, I switched to C Sharp and WinForms. You might loathe, but it still works like a charm to this day and is performant enough. That's it for the history lesson. I hope you didn't fall asleep. Before I explain all the features, I have to talk about some general aspects to give you a bit of context. Firstly, the window has been designed in a flexible way so users can resize to the liking. Both position and the size of the last session will be restored on the launch. To make my life a lot easier, I have written four custom control classes to handle reading from and writing to addresses of another process. A jackbox to flip between two values, a flag box to deal with bit masks, color box to handle the 3 byte BGR values and text box for everything else. Text boxes are the only control where you need to hit the enter key to write a changed value to the process. Controls of the mentioned classes are referred to as memory controls by me. At the moment, the refresh rate of the values is 60Hz. High rates are possible but lead to way higher CPU load since I can no longer let the thread sleep between each cycle. As long as a memory control has focus, its value will not be overridden on refresh. When displaying float values, they are kept at 8 decimal places, since this was the highest precision I have witnessed when testing. Note that most values don't even use all of them. All angles are displayed in their internal radian format. For those of you who don't know, a full circle are 360 degrees, which is the same as 2 times pi radians. Enough. Time to speak about what you can actually see on screen right now. To avoid dragging out this video, I will skip all controls I deem self-explanatory. The process combo box in the top left corner refreshes every thousand milliseconds and shows each instance of WoW Exe currently running on the system. This means you can switch between multiple active clients and if there is only one during launch, it will be chosen automatically. In addition, I also made sure that switching character on the same process works as intended as well. At the moment, the client version isn't checked at all. It's assumed you know what you do and you only use 3.3.5. Everything else is thematically split into three tabs. Player and camera, environment and waypoints. On the first two tabs, the controls are grouped by topic and nearly all labels have tooltips with detailed info about the control next to it. The collision checkbox of the player sets the hitbox to zero, meaning it is possible to face through everything, even terrain. If you didn't start the application while the value has already been zeroed, the original value will be restored when unchecking. 
the speed values you see are all given as the length units per second. One of my favorite functions is the instant checkbox in the click to move group. If enabled, your character teleports instead of running to the destination, which is super important in out of bounds explorations since geometry tends to load and unload unexpectedly in those places. The spectate mode, which is when the camera is no longer attached to the character but free floating instead, has its own set of coordinates and angles. The active checkbox is also accessible by pressing F3. Since spectate mode doesn't affect the character positions and rotations out of the box, I introduced a new checkbox to copy the values of the camera over the character. This is necessary when you travel greater distances in spectate mode, because many dynamic objects or the background music only load by proximity to the character itself. In the camera group, the only thing noteworthy is the Y rotation. This value is only interpreted as long as you are in spectate mode. Resource and NPC tracking as well as the player state are flag boxes, which means that those checkboxes represent a single bit in a 4 byte value each. As the group box labels already hint, you can double click them to show unknown flags which are hidden by default. The memory controls on the environment tab are a tad more complex. Most of them have extra override protection checkboxes to the right of them, since the client changes those values each frame otherwise. Override protection is in essence just me changing raw assembly instructions of the client process with no ops when enabled, and changing them back to their original values when disabled. Fork density is one of the most important controls for exploration videos, since disabling it gives you a much clearer view of an area. Its value goes from 0 to 1. Light intensity on the other hand goes for whatever reason from 0 to 255 and also affects the UI and the player model. You might need to do a relog for some aspects of this value to take effect. Skybox is a bit of an exception and isn't really a normal memory control. If you choose one of its values, it is written to all 825 error definitions, which means each error uses the same skybox. Clearing the value will restore the default skybox settings for all areas. As you might have already noticed, there are a lot of numbers missing in this list. I only added the values used by the game in 335, even though there are other skybox values available like for example number 3. With the time control, you can set the position of the sun or moon. The speed value dictates how fast they move across the sky. The default value is 1 over 60. WMO lights controls if certain buildings have the night lights turned on. I was actually surprised that the game had a feature like that, because I never noticed it in all those years. Map ID is just for information and does not load you into another map if you change its value. The view distance control lets you increase the area rendered beyond what the game normally offers you. Around 2100 is the limit which is still considered being safe in terms of avoiding crashes. In the render flex group you can tweak the way the client renders the scene. Some of those values only take effect when you relog and others depend on each other. Since this is a flag box you can double click the group box header to show unknown values. Because it is a very complex topic which would easily exceed the time for this showcase, I will make a dedicated video about them in the very near future. Finally we have reached the waypoints tab. Some general information about the list first. Selecting rows is done by clicking the index column. This will shade the entire row blue. The current row is defined as the one with the small triangle icon. If you change a cell's value, you need to confirm it by pressing enter before the new value is available to the application. Notice the small pencil icon next to the index. Double clicking a row will lead the coordinates and the rotations to be loaded into the client and spectate mode to be activated. Selected rows can be either cut or copied and then be pasted above the current row. Ok, now let's explain the columns when necessary. In sleep, you can set a time in milliseconds before the transition to the next waypoint takes place. A negative value means that the application waits indefinitely until you resume manually. 
interpolation type lets you choose the algorithm used to interpolate between waypoints. And unlike WoW Machinima tool, there are no horrendous and unintuitive B splines available. Natural cubic interpolation leads to very smooth transitions, but has a lot of overshooting. Archima and PGIP, on the other hand, prevent overshooting, but have less rounded interpolations. The interpolation algorithm used for the rotations is hard-coded to use Akima, since natural leads to a lot of head bobbing. With transition type, you define how you want to transition to the next waypoint. Either by speed, which moves the camera using running speed multiplied by the transition value, or by duration, which defines the time it takes to reach the next waypoint in milliseconds. To the right, there are buttons to work with the list data. Save the waypoints to a file, either by dialog or shortcut, load waypoints from a file, which is the same but in reverse, add new waypoint before the current row, which refuses and plays a beep sound if spectate mode isn't active, also accessible by the shift hotkey, replace selected waypoints coordinates and rotations with the current values from the process, which also plays a beep sound if not in spectate mode, Clearing all waypoints, which is also accessible by pressing F6. You can swap interpolation type of selected rows through the three available values. And the same can be done for the transition types. The transition value of the current row can be replicated for all selected rows. Because you basically always want to be in-game when starting the camera movement, there is no explicit button for it. Instead, the interpolation procedure is started, paused and resumed with the hotkey F5. Resuming also cancels active sleep timers. Holding shift in addition to F5 leads to forcing a new interpolation start instead of pausing or resuming. You can skip waypoints by selecting a row where you want the interpolations to start from. This is very useful when working with the longer projects. That's basically it for the GUI. I still have more things planned for the future though. For example, refactoring the code to increase readability, performance and correctness, which is mostly for myself. I also want to implement custom tooltip handling, since default ones are handled by Windows and I can set the font used, which is a big detriment in some cases. Offering the user a way to assign hotkeys to select the controls is also on my mind. And for the far future, I want to implement drawing the interpolation path in-game by hacking the DirectX 9 DLL. I saw this is possible in other projects, but I certainly will take quite some time to wrap my head around it. If you are interested in this tool, nope, it's not open source. I intend to sell copies to both content creators, but also just normies who enjoy exploring. Just hit me up if you are interested. Should I ever abandon NeoWow Utils, I will certainly open source it and announce it in a pinned post on this video. But until then, please don't beg me constantly about it. Because I enjoy both learning and teaching, I will share my findings by updating the wikis wherever I can. More videos about those or general programming concepts are planned on this or my other peer programming channel. I hope you found it interesting and if you bought a copy, Thank you, I hope you enjoy it just as much as I do.